Hi everyone, welcome back to another video and today we're going to start talking about differences in sexual development. So in the previous videos, you'll notice that we talked a lot about the foundations of embryology, we talked about some genetics, about the X chromosome and the Y chromosome, we talked about the SRY gene, and then we talked about the indifferent stage of development, and then most recently we talked about male phenotype and female genotype and those, what those processes look like when a fetus is developing. Um, but I do want to remind you that those are just the bimodal occurrences. So they are the most common situation to where your genetics and your phenotype are going to line up, but that is not always the case. And so today we're going to start by talking about two very distinct scenarios of where differences in sexual development occur and where this pathway might differ from what you would expect to see in an embryo. So um, if you look at the screen, it looks kind of intimidating. If anything on here looks unfamiliar, go back and watch the last few videos where I address each of these pathways because this is just both of those pathways combined together into one image. So as you can see, on this one side we have our male genitalia and on this side we have our female genitalia develop. And these two just overlap and they interplay. And so we're going to take this nice and slowly, step by step, to see what would happen um, if we have differences in sexual development. So our scenarios today, we're going to go back to our friends, the SRY gene. And so if you remember from the very first video, I talked about the SRY gene, how it's normally on the Y chromosome, but sometimes it can migrate to the X chromosome. And so today we're going to look at just what happens when we have that translocation. So uh, for the first example, we're going to be talking about the someone who is XX, but they also have the SRY gene. And so we're going to look at this pathway and see what would happen with our XX plus SRY. We have our indifferent gonad, and do we have an SRY? We do. So we can go that way. We don't need to go this way. So since we're not going this way, we can cross these out. We are not, we are not going to develop internal female genitalia. We are going to follow this pathway. We do have TDF, so we are going to make a testis. And since we have a testis, we have Leydig cells and Sertoli cells. Our Leydig cells are going to produce testosterone. Testosterone is going to encourage the maintenance of the mesonephric duct, and so we are going to keep this, and we are going to keep our internal male genitalia, so we are going to develop a seminal vesicle, the epididymis, the ejaculatory duct, and the ductus deferens. And then our testosterone is going to be converted by 5-alpha reductase to DHT, and since we still have, we're going to assume we still have these intact, so we do produce DHT and we do produce external male genitalia, such as the penis, the scrotum, and the prostate. So um, we look back here at the Sertoli cells. We still have those. And so we are going to produce MIF, which is going to inhibit the paramesonephric duct. And we are no longer capable of producing internal female genitalia. So, let's see what we have here. We have our genotype is XX, and our external genitalia, so part of our phenotype, is male. And then our internal genitalia is also male. So there are going to be some nuances to the, this. There are actually some cases of um, what they call the XX male that does not have SRY and that is, the, we don't really know a lot about why that is the case, but don't worry about that for now. We're just going to focus on um, the cases that do have the SRY that are the XX male. And so in this case, our genotype and our phenotype do not match up. We have what we would normally think of as female chromosomes, but we have 
an entirely very normal, if you were to call it normal, presentation for a male. And so this is just an example of why you can't assume somebody's biological sex just based on their uh, external anatomy or their internal anatomy, and also that you might not even know what someone's genetics are. And so this is just one example. Let's look at another one. So let's take the opposite situation. So let's say in this case that we have, if I get my pen out and stop zooming around the screen because this is a mess. There we go. So this one we are going to have an X Y, but this one is not going to have SRY. So we have XY, which is normally our male chromosomes, but let's follow this pathway. So um, we would expect to be following this male pathway, but we do not have an SRY, so we cannot go this way. If we don't have SRY, can we produce TDF? No. Can we produce a testis? No. So we're not going to produce these. We're not going to produce, and when I say I'm not going to produce testosterone, um, a phenotypic female will produce a little bit of testosterone, but we're talking about specifically uh, the amount of testosterone produced from a testis, which is going to be significantly more then um, you would produce, and uh, we're going to cover all of the hormones in later videos because that is a whole other can of worms to open up about the hormones. So for right now, just um, we're going to go with that they're not producing enough testosterone to enter this pathway, and uh, we're not going to have 5-alpha reductase, we're not going to have DHT, we're not going to produce external male genitalia, and since we don't have enough testosterone to maintain this mesonephric duct, we're not going to, and we're not going to produce internal male genitalia. So, what else can we do? Um, well, we're going to go this way. Um, so no SRY, we uh, have no TDF, uh, we have there is a lot of evidence that shows that WNT4 is present in males, so it's not like you're going to have a case that doesn't have WNT4. So we have no SRY, no TDF, but we do have WNT4. So we are going to produce an ovary, and this ovary is going to produce estradiol. So we're going to make external female genitalia. And since we don't have to, uh, Sertoli cells, we are not going to make MIF. So MIF is not going to be able to inhibit, because remember, MIF is inhibitory, so we, if we inhibit the inhibition, we're going to have stimulation. So we are going to keep this mesonephric duct. It's going to develop into the internal female genitalia. So in this case, we have someone who is XY, and they are going to have a clitoris, labia, distal vagina, and they will also have fallopian tubes, a uterus, and a proximal vagina. So they're going to have a complete vagina, complete female reproductive tract. So let's look at this. We have our genotype is XY. So that is usually associated with males. Our external genitalia is female, and our internal genitalia is also female. So, did you get it right from the very first video when I asked uh, what would happen with this translocation? So, as you can see, this process ends up being really, really complicated, and this is just with inhibition or addition of something very, very early on in the pathway. So in future videos, I'm going to 
cover what happens later on down the pathway because we're going to start seeing different combinations of external internal genitalia. So I hope that all of this kind of starts to make sense because the next few videos are about to get what I believe to be uh, kind of mind-blowing because when I first learned about this, it just... It was the first time I'd ever really heard of these combinations presenting, but they are actually a lot more common. And so, uh, as, as I clearly demonstrated here, you can have cases where your genetics do not match your internal and external genitalia. And so, if you are XX with an SRY, we might not even know. And, or if you are XY and you're missing an SRY, we may not even know about that either. And some cases you might have some variations in puberty, you might um, have a situation that resembles more of a Klinefelter type situation, but um, a lot of the times there isn't really a way to tell. And I'm just going to close off by reminding you all that it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, if you're not the one taking care of this person, you're not the one handling their medical history, then you have no business trying to figure out what their genes are uh, based on their external and internal presentation because it's just kind of tacky to ask people about that kind of stuff. And I, the point of all these videos is to just reinforce that assumptions cannot be made about people. And so I hope that these videos are helpful in explaining these kinds of situations. And I hope that you'll stick around for the next one as we explore more of these differences in sexual development. I will see you all in the next one.